solar inverters. How to choose a good one in Australia in 2021. Hi, I'm Finn Peacock, a chartered electrical engineer and the founder of solarquotes.com.au. After the panels, the solar inverter is the next most important part of a solar system. Its job is to convert the DC electricity produced by your solar panels into AC electricity used by your home. There are dozens of inverter brands available in Australia. How should you know which ones are good and which ones are lemons? That's where I come in. With 11 years of experience in the solar industry, I've put together this chart. On the left are the cheaper inverters. On the right, the more expensive inverters. But whether they are budget or premium, if the brands are on this chart, I'd be happy to have them on my home. What you might not realize is that the component of your solar system that is most likely to fail in the first 10 to 15 years is the inverter. That's because they work hard all day and power electronics can only do that for so long. I'd expect a premium inverter brand like Fronius to last a few more years than a budget inverter brand like Goodwe because of the way they are engineered and built. So for that reason, if you have limited funds, I'd recommend buying a premium inverter with budget panels instead of premium panels with a budget inverter. Now, let's talk about warranties. The minimum warranty offered by all the major inverter brands is five years. But there are many brands that now offer 10-year warranties as standard, such as Goodwe and SunGrow. This gives you a lot of bargaining power if your installer is trying to sell you an inverter that doesn't have a 10-year warranty. You might even be able to get them to throw in the 10-year warranty upgrade for free. Just don't tell them I told you that. If they just won't budge, you may have to pay a couple of hundred dollars more for a 10-year warranty, but it's absolutely worth it in my opinion. So insist on a 10-year warranty with your inverter. Now let's talk about inverter technologies. Inverters come in two main varieties. String inverters, which are a big box that goes on the wall, which all the solar panels connect into, and teeny tiny micro inverters that go on the back of each solar panel. There are lots of string inverter brands that I'd be happy to have on my own home. But when it comes to micro inverters, the only game in town, as far as I'm concerned, is a brand called Enphase. Now, why would you go for micro inverters over a string inverter? Well, they provide several advantages. One, they optimize each panel individually. With a standard string inverter like a Fronius, if one panel gets shaded, it can cause all of the panels on that string to drop in performance, kind of like when you stand on a hose. When you use micro inverters, each panel is independent of one another. So if one panel is shaded, only that panel will drop in performance and all the rest will hum along nicely. Another benefit of micro inverters is that they convert the DC power produced by the panels into AC electricity at the source, at the panel. So you don't need to run high voltage DC cables through your roof. While stressing that well-installed solar is perfectly safe, whether DC or AC, this is why I chose microinverters for my own house. My house is made of straw, seriously, and I didn't want high voltage DC running through the straw. The other nice thing about microinverters is that you can monitor each individual panel's performance. To be honest, 95% of people that get a microinverter system get bored of this checking after about a week. But if you're really into your numbers, it might be worth it for you. The disadvantage of microinverters is that they are expensive. They'll add about 20, 25% to the cost of your solar system compared to using a string inverter. Another option similar to microinverters is an optimizer based string system. At the time of filming, the two brands that offer first party optimization are Huawei and SolarEdge with Tygo optimizers as an inverter agnostic option. An optimizer based system has the string inverter on your wall as well as small boxes of electronics called optimizers on the back of each panel. They offer similar benefits to microinverters despite being a different technology. Optimizer based systems are slightly cheaper than microinverter based ones, but generally it works out about the same, about a 20% price premium over a standard string inverter without optimization. A quick note to houses that have three phase power. If you have three phase power to your home, I recommend using a three phase inverter. You can use a single phase inverter, but you are more likely to have over voltage issues if you push all your solar exports down a single wire instead of three. So I'm a big fan of three phase inverters for three phase homes. Solar inverters and oversizing. I get emails all the time 
saying, I've got a quote for solar. They've offered me a five kilowatts inverter and 6.6 .6 kilowatts of panels. What's going on? Am I gonna blow up the inverter? Having more panels than an inverter is rated for is known as inverter oversizing. And it's a really smart design move for a few reasons. Firstly, the solar rebate is based on panel capacity, how many panels you've got, not inverter capacity. You can have 33% more panels than an inverter is rated for and still claim the rebate. And since there's little extra installation cost involved in adding 33% more panels when the installers are already on your roof, oversizing rarely delivers bang for buck. Secondly, you'll squeeze way more power annually out of an oversized 6.6 .6 kilowatt system with a five kilowatt inverter compared to five kilowatts of panels with a five kilowatt inverter. Now, let's talk about solar inverters and adding batteries. Batteries are all over the news at the moment and batteries are great for a lot of things, but they are still expensive. So many people want to buy a battery ready solar system that they can add batteries to once they've come down in price a bit. The bottom line is, when you use a method known as AC coupling, you can retrofit batteries to any existing solar system, regardless of what inverter you have. For example, I had a Tesla Powerwall retrofitted to my existing six kilowatt, three phase microinverter system with no problems at all. Some installers might try to push you towards getting a hybrid inverter as a true battery ready option. But unless you're planning on adding batteries really soon, they're not worth the extra expense over a non-hybrid inverter that you can AC couple a battery to. The exception here is if your local network has a silly rule preventing you from adding an AC coupled battery. I won't go into the details of that here, but a good local installer will be able to navigate that situation. To finish off, I want to talk about the importance of having a consumption monitor with your solar system. A consumption monitor is a small box that sits inside your switchboard. It measures how much electricity is coming from or going to the grid. To be clear, you absolutely can install a solar system without a consumption monitor and it will work, but I strongly recommend getting one. Without a consumption monitor, although your inverter will be able to tell you how much solar is being generated at any point in time, you'll be blind as to how much solar is actually being used by your house. I could make a whole other video on why you should have this information. But for now, just let me say that for around 500 bucks, a consumption monitor will allow you to understand exactly how your solar system is working and the best way to manage your energy for maximum savings. For me personally, it's worth every dollar. To summarize, the solar inverter is the workhorse of your solar system. Make sure you choose a reputable brand that will go the distance. My recommended brand chart that I showed earlier can help you here. Aim for a 10 year warranty with your inverter, even if you have to pay a little bit extra. Consider microinverters or optimizers if you have shading issues on your roof, or if you really like the sound of being able to monitor those panels individually. Don't be afraid of oversizing your system by 33%. It'll deliver great bang for buck and provide extra generation in those cold, less sunny winter months. Insist on consumption monitoring with your system. If you're considering solar and don't know who to trust, my website, solarquotes.com.au, makes it really easy to get up to three free quotes from installers that I have personally pre-vetted and trust. Just visit solarquotes.com.au, pop your postcode into the top right box, fill in the form, and I'll take it from there. Thanks for watching.